Hey guys, if you're watching this vlog, it's because you are a Gemini, or perhaps you know one of those party animal Geminis, and you want to find out more about what makes them tick, what they're all about. So this vlog is dedicated to Gemini, because we are slap bang in the middle of the Gemini time of year, which runs from the 21st of May to the 20th of June every year. I know sometimes people are a little bit confused when they're on the cusp, i.e. the 21st of May or the 20th of June. Uh, it's most likely, it can be calculated exactly, and I'm leaving a link uh, below this vlog where you can go and have a look and you can send me your details if you know your time of birth and you happen to be born on the 21st of May or the 20th of June and you want to know for sure if you've fallen into Gemini or Taurus or on the other side Gemini and Cancer, I can work that out for you. And alternatively, if you're just interested in know where your other planets, because it's not all about the sun sign, if you're born at this time of the year you have a Gemini sun, but your Mercury, Moon and all your other planets along with your Ascendant and Midheaven will be in different placements. So if you fill in your name on the contact form at the bottom of my blog, I'll work that all out for you. But now let's crack on. If you're a Gemini, you are a party animal. Yeah, don't be shy, don't hide away, I know you guys and you like to burn the candle at both ends. Gemini is the sign of communication, of being sociable, friendly, being out there, being in the mainstream of life and being where it's at. Geminis excel in the media and there's a very good reason for that. It's because Geminis love news. They like to know what's happening. They like to be abreast of everything that's going on, either current affairs and the showbiz world and the technology world. Anything that is new excites Gemini. So you'll get people, for example, in the UK, Rebecca Brooks, who's well known for her influence in the newspaper world. She is an example of a Gemini. Another example is Tim Berners-Lee, who invented the internet. Now, what a fantastic theme for, for Gemini, the sign that's involved with communication. So appropriate that it should actually be a Gemini who came up with a concept that actually dominates our whole life. What else do we know about Gemini? Not only that they're sociable, but Geminis really tend to excel and to do well in life. And that's because they are very open to new experiences, highly adaptable, and because they love people. They love to be around people, communicating, talking to people, picking up new ideas and spreading ideas. And this is when Gemini thrive. They really do well in dynamic environments. Gemini do a lot less well where there's a highly kind of structured or authoritarian environment because they like to have a fast paced, fast moving environment where they're constantly bombarded with new ideas and they get to react to those ideas. Gemini extremely curious, they're quite nosy, they like to get involved, a little bit of gossip now and again. It's just whole part of knowing what is going on. Now, Geminis excel at business, and that's probably because what is business really about? It's about sales. It's about being able to communicate with people, knowing who your client is, knowing how to communicate with your client, and knowing what sort of information is important. And why Geminis excel at business is because they're highly observant. So they know how to see what's important and they react to that. They're people who are highly actionable. They not only know how to pick up on information, but they usually know how to use that information in the best possible way and to direct it to achieving a goal. Geminis will tend to go through quite a few career moves as they go through their life because their interests change and they like to adapt and they like to jump on a bandwagon. So if something's happening, you can guarantee that a Gemini is going to be at the forefront of getting the ball rolling in that new kind of uh, new avenues that open up. Geminis are also workaholics. When they find something that they love doing, they, you, you can't stop them. They love their work and they plug on. And I'm thinking, for example, of um, Joan Rivers. She is a Gemini and she was working right up until her untimely death. And I think she was at, got to 82. And she was working up till a few days before. She loved her work that much. Also comedian Jackie Mason, another Gemini. He's still working. Um, Barry Manilow is also a Gemini. He's in his 70s now, still touring, still working. And possibly one of the best examples is Prince Philip. He's 95. He'll be celebrating his 95th on June the 11th, and he's still working. I'm not sure if that's exactly an option in the royal line of work, but he certainly is still out there and seems to be enjoying it. So when Gemini find something that they love doing, they can be highly successful because there's this massive drive and commitment to their work. Now, Gemini is what not a lot of people realize. Gemini's don't wear their hearts on their sleeves. They're kind of analytical, and they tend to analyze their emotions. They like to use logic and be very rational 
and work through things. So they're not one of the signs that you can say rely a lot on gut feel or are highly emotional in the way that they deal with other people or make decisions. But Geminis have a deeply sensitive side. They can be very hurt and often you won't even realize it. So you, you can have signs like Aries who can be a little bit blunt sometimes. Also signs perhaps like Scorpio and Libra who are a little bit too direct, a little bit to the point maybe with criticisms. And these signs can hurt Gemini and Gemini won't always show it. They'll just tend to retreat. They'll go a little bit quiet on you and there'll just be this little bit of detachment. You'll feel the will wind chill factor from the Gemini if you've hurt them. They won't necessarily confront you about it because the other thing about Gemini is they are not a confrontational side. Gemini like to talk things out but they're not going to go in there with aggression and they tend to avoid conflict situations. Gemini are very clever with the way they use words. They're quite witty, they're quite, um, you know, they, they don't usually tackle an obstacle head on. They like to circumvent it cleverly or work out a quick, uh, a clever plan to get around things. So that way, when you have a confrontation with a Gemini, they might just cleverly use words to get themselves out of it or to convey how they're feeling. But what they won't do is go into a heated debate where they get really angry, because that's not the Gemini style. You'll find the Gemini are often accused of being maybe a little fickle or fence-sitting. But that's because Gemini, they can always see both sides of the story. And they don't like to alienate people. They don't like to burn bridges or make bad friends. So they always prefer to see both sides of the argument. And although they're not known as being go-betweens, because that's more Libran territory, they do like to bring people together with communication and they won't usually nail their colours to the mask and choose a side. Because they like to keep their options open. Gemini, if there's anything they hate, it's being boxed in, nailed down to one particular thing. That's why they'll tend to hold back on decisions as well. Gemini are typically bad at making decisions because they'll go this way and that way and they'll like to weigh things up, think things through really thoroughly. And they feel once they've made a decision, certain options close down and Geminis just love to maintain the flexibility. Uh, another reason why Gemini do so well in life is because they're highly adaptable. They are chameleons and they can kind of like water takes the shape of the container that it's in. Geminis can adapt to various situations, different people, cultures, languages. They're excellent at adapting and fitting into a new circumstance and almost changing themselves and so that they can best thrive in a new circumstance. So Gemini do, they enjoy travel, they're very good with languages, picking up new language skills and learning about new cultures and being really good at identifying how best to communicate and uh, get the most out of the new culture. So, um, Geminis are, uh, Gemini is divided into three different deacons. So the first deacon runs from May the 21st to June the 1st and that's first deacon uh, Gemini. It's ruled by Mercury. Now those Geminis tend to be the best communicators, the most highly adaptable, um, extremely good with words, language, writing, publishing. For example, some examples of those Geminis are uh, John F. Kennedy, Henry, Henry Kissinger. The next deacon of Gemini runs from the 2nd to the 12th of June. That particular deacon is ruled by Venus, and that's where you'll find a lot of the Gemini who are involved in the arts world, like Angelina Jolie, Marilyn Monroe, uh, Joan Rivers is also in that category. So that particular genre, or uh, that particular category of Gemini, are highly suited to the entertainments field. So they can use all their wonderful skills with language, adaptability, being in the mainstream of, of life, and apply those to the arts and entertainment industry. Then we come to the last deacon, which runs from the, the 12th to the 20th of June. Now that particular deacon of Aries is ruled by Uranus. Now this is where you get your political Gemini. So Donald, Donald Trump is in that particular deacon and he happens to be on the same day as Che Guevara, different year. Uh, you also have Boris Johnson, who you'll know if you're in the UK, and Anne Sung Si, who was in, on house arrest in Burma for many years. So this is now, because Uranus is associated with the planet of rebellion, of unrest, of, of politics, that's why you get quite a few of these political Gemini, and the more outspoken, particularly the more outrageous Gemini, in that particular section, oh, a section of Gemini. So I'm thinking, you know, with Donald Trump, he thinks he can say basically anything he wants and rely on this kind of Gemini ability to 
slide your way out of difficult situations by using the right words and and just wheedling your way around to get himself out of anything. I think he's definitely not very confrontational one-on-one. -on -one. He tends to throw things out there in a typical third deacon Gemini way that are kind of confrontational. But then he backtracks and he wants to talk people around. He doesn't really want to be bad friends with people. Geminis rarely do. Geminis are the people that bring everybody together, bring everyone together with information. Now, Gemini in relationships. Who are Gemini good with? Well, the thing about Gemini is they are quite insecure at heart and they're quite, they're looking for an anchor in life. And so they're very good with partners who can provide that anchor. Now, Gemini change as they go through life. They're not the sort of people who are very set. You get other signs, for example, Scorpio and Taurus and Aries, Capricorn to quite a large extent, those signs are very set. They know who they are, they know what they are, they're quite inflexible and rigid and as they go through life they don't change very much in terms of their personality. But Gemini are different. They're a work in progress. They're more like a movie than a still shot. As Gemini go through life they change, they go through very different phases and they can be one person one decade, a totally different person another decade because they tend to grow and change by virtue of all the influences around them and in the important people in their life. So if you can be with a Gemini, not only should you not be a homebody because Geminis are not looking for people who just want to sit at home and live a very conservative life, but you should also be prepared to live with a partner who's constantly evolving and changing, someone who's not just one thing. Because Geminis can surprise you. They are represented as the twins, you know, the two sides. But there are far more facets to Gemini than just two. You never really know what you're going to get with a Gemini, and that's really exciting. Most often, you will find Gemini gravitate to relationships with Virgo, Pisces, and Sagittarius. Now, one of the most successful relationships out of those three would be with the Virgo, because Virgo are an earth sign. So they can, intellectually, they are on a par with it, Gemini. Gemini really need intellectual stimulation, a lot of talking and a lot of communication in a relationship. Virgo also value that whole communication side, and that's good. But Virgo have a lot of earthiness in them, are more practical, and they can help stabilize the Gemini and give the Gemini more focus. The relationship with the Sagittarian, very successful, particularly as friends. This is a great relationship, particularly for young couples who are exciting, adventurous. They're traveling, doing really cool things with their lives. That's not necessarily the best combination long term. Both signs would have to have more Earth influences in them in comparison to the rest of the chart. Otherwise, it can be a rather unstable combination because the Sagittarian doesn't necessarily give the Gemini that anchor that the Gemini definitely needs. But traditional astrology will tell you that those signs that I've just said, Virgo, Sagittarius and Pisces, don't often go with Gemini. And yet, if you do your own anecdotal studies, you'll find that if you are a Gemini, those are the signs that you are attracting in your life. Another excellent sign that goes with Gemini is Aquarius. This is because, again, Aquarians are very intellectual. They're also changeable. They also enjoy current affairs, love to know what's going on in the world, very interested in politics, so they go particularly well with Geminis of the third deacon. And Aquarius, the water bearer, the, the purveyor of information, works very well with Gemini because they're both so interested in people, culture, the arts, and what's going on in the world. But Aquarius is a fixed sign, so they do have that stubbornness, they're more rigid, and that provides a structure for Gemini and a safe kind of holding space that Gemini are looking because they know the Aquarian is somewhat reliable and there's the steadfastness. And two signs that work quite well with Gemini, particularly in the bedroom, with very sexy combinations, is Gemini with Taurus or Gemini with Scorpio. Now, if there's anything that Gemini can't stand, it's being controlled. And out of the signs, Taurus and Scorpio both tend to be a little bit controlling. They can be quite possessive, and they're highly structured signs. So although Gemini, that really rubs them up the wrong way, the whole Scorpio possessive, the Taurus possessive side, in another way, this highly solid, definite, almost arrogance that the Scorpio and the Taurus have make Gemini feel very secure. And that for Gemini can be a very reassuring thing. And these two signs can give Gemini a great backbone and a great foundation from which to do all the things that they find so exciting. Okay, 
I think at this stage it might be good to mention that I have written a book on Gemini so it tells you all sorts of exciting things about Gemini from career, relationship. I've done a matchup, a detailed matchup for Gemini with each of the different signs so no matter what sign you are or, or you're Gemini and you're looking to see how you match with all the other 12 signs it's all in there and what I've also done that you don't find in too many of these books is that I've done a specific personality analysis for every separate day of Gemini so it starts on May the 21st goes right through to June the 20th and for every different day I have a detailed analysis of the people born on that day and what your specific personality would be based on that day and I've also done an analysis on the deacons so you can narrow it down it's not just about Gemini but you're narrowing it down now to the specific third of Gemini you were born in and to the specific day for more detailed information on personality that's available on Amazon and I, I run promotions on it from from time to time and as I say easy to find I'm only Lisa Lozuli there there's my book on Gemini it's on Kindle as well as in paperback makes a great gift if you're looking and I do have my book on Gemini for predictions for this year 2016. 2016 is really an interesting year for Gemini because we have a few of the major planets we've got Neptune, Jupiter and also Saturn are in the other mutable signs so Neptune is currently in Pisces which equates to Gemini's 12th house uh, Saturn is in Sagittarius the seventh house of relationship and Jupiter is currently particularly this month in the fourth house which is the house of family. So what this is saying to me is it's a very exciting and very changeable time for Aries, for, for Gemini at least. There's an awful lot happening. What is positive in the Gemini life at right now is that your stable relationships, particularly your marriage partner or your permanent partner, are providing a lot of structure and stability in your life and are giving you a lot of support. However, conversely, you should not be taking uh, anything for granted in terms of solid relationships. That need not be only personal relationships, it could be your business relationships that go back a number of years. You should not, in looking at something new, forget to nurture, protect and still build on the relationships that you do have that are an important structure in your life. Because there is quite a lot happening right now and certain things can be taken for granted. The things that are going well, for example, might be taken for granted and you may not put as much work in. Because Jupiter is in the fourth house, is an opportunity for moving home, for expanding your home, or for expanding your family. If you wanted to, to add to your family, having more children, or if you're thinking about maybe this is the right time to take a sabbatical, spend some time off, travel, or move to another location in the world for a period of your life in order to expand your horizons. Now with Neptune in the 10th, I've spoken before about how Gemini are quite practical, logical, you're not usually on a fanciful a wavelength where you look into the spiritual side of life. But at this stage with Gemini, you are being opened up to looking at things in a new way and perhaps seeing the more subtle, more esoteric side of life. So how that might manifest is you might be looking into more um, concepts like body language, psychology, uh, spirituality, the kind of subtle influences, for example, um, mind power, visualization, visualizing your goals, all those kind of things you might be looking at more closely now as a way to attain your dreams. Because attaining the dream and moving towards something that has been a life-held ambition is very important for Gemini right now and visualization can play a really essential role in that. Now, I have a friend, her name is Sholga Breen and she's a Gemini. She's the epitome of a Gemini in the fact that she's gone through quite a few career changes already. She's only in her 30s, she's trained as a chef, she's been in publishing, and now she's running an extremely successful business with Juice Plus as her own franchise. Why she is so much like a Gemini is because she's able to react to new information very, very quickly. She knows how to get onto, um, onto a, not a, just a bandwagon, but to see opportunities and she deals very well with people as Gemini do and knows how to take opportunities and convert it into something concrete that's going to bring people in and earn money. And I know that she's been a lot more open this year to things like visualization, the 
where you can do um, mind boards, mind maps, accessing the hidden parts of our mind that are so important to do with optimizing our success in terms of being positive and being able to visualize everything that could be and working towards our goals in that way. So it's not just working towards goals, Gemini, at the moment in a practical sense where you're taking the logical steps. It's also gearing up your mind that you've got the right mindset, the right focus, that you are picturing yourself in this ideal future where you are being very successful and not only attaining the financial goals but your non-financial goals as well. So for Gemini, this is a wonderful year to think clearly about what's really important in life, what matters to you, where you see yourself in the future, and to dream and to think very big. It's a time of great expectations and moving towards those expectations, but utilizing, doing it in a holistic way, not just in a purely financial accounting sense of, of the way and plugging on. It's a, a sense of seeing the very big broad picture in terms of your life and the people in your life and moving towards a, a very exciting future. So think big, be excited and move towards that using everything at your disposal from the practical things to the more esoteric and subtle psychological things that go on in your mind. So if you are interested in knowing more about your chart so I said at the beginning, it's not just about being a Gemini or a Taurus or whatever. They are, we all have to look at where our Ascendant, Mercury, Mars, Venus, Moon, all the other planets are. You can click one of the links at the bottom of my blog and it'll take you to a page where you can fill in your birth chart details and I will send you a chart. And if you may be interested as well in numerology, it's an additional way of getting more of an insight into your character based on the key numbers like your date of birth, your year of birth, and I show you how you can use all those numbers to gain analysis, to gain insights into all sorts of aspects of your personality from health, career, and relationships, and uh, understanding what the numbers mean in your life, why you attract certain people from different number groups. So that's that also under the name of Lisa Lazuli. On Amazon and I've got all my other books as well all the horoscope books they're all there on Amazon all the horoscopes book for 2016 quite a momentous year because of the way planets are moving around and planets give us a lot of opportunities obviously they challenge the heck out of us at some stages as well but lots of opportunities are rising too so Gemini party on is the message I think it's wonderful celebrate the fact that you are a Gemini it's of course, all the signs have their own unique attributes, but Geminis are some of the most successful people out there because you have wonderful skills, you can use your adaptability, your people power, and the wonderful logic and mental abilities you have to make virtually anything in your life or anything you want to do work. Blog. I've got some other links to my books that will pop in the bottom so that it's easy to access. You can join me on Facebook as well. The link is there and I hope to do many more of these blogs.